Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, the following video that I'm going to react to is out of self-interest, if you will, because as you guys, I am fasting as well, of course, Ramadan Mubarak, and therefore my question is, how did the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, eat during Ramadan? So today on the channel One Islam Productions, we're going to check out the routine of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, during Ramadan. So as you guys know, I reverted to Islam last year. So this is my second Ramadan already. And when I wasn't a Muslim, I found it always very strange looking at certain Muslims when they would break their fast and they would indulge in all kinds of junk food. They would eat breakfast, lunch and dinner in one sitting, gorge themselves on food. And for me, this defied fasting. This didn't make any sense whatsoever. Isn't this about humbling ourselves, getting closer to God? What's the point even in fasting all day just to then break it and indulge in all kinds of gluttony? Now that I'm a Muslim myself and this already being my second Ramadan, looking at those practices, I don't see religion. I see culture, cultural practices that made it into the religion, certain customs, ethnic traditions, recipes from mama and grandma and whatnot. But what does the religion truly teach? What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam really eat so today inshallah we're gonna find it out guys before we start the video as always if you enjoy my work leave me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box to further support my work and now with no further ado let's have a look Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi huda amma ba'du assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Many times people say, what was the routine of our Prophet ﷺ during the month of Ramadan? And they fail to know that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions lived the whole year as if it was Ramadan. Yeah, that's a good the point. The only edge that Ramadan had was that they would raise the bar during the month of Ramadan. So the Prophet والسلام, as a means of preparation, he used to fast the vast majority of the month before Ramadan, which was Sha'ban. And some say that he used to fast it all. Wow. So that when Ramadan was due, people would hit the ground running. They're used to fasting, they used to night prayer, they used to reciting the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ used to give the glad tidings of Ramadan to his companions, where he said, O oh people, this month has come, and in it there is a night that is better than a thousand months. Right. Whoever is deprived from doing good in it, he is deprived from all goodness. And no one would be deprived of its goodness except someone who is doomed and wronged. And we never the really know when it is, right? Used to fast every single day of Ramadan. Of course. So what was special in his fasting? Nothing much. He used to have the pre-dawn meal. And he used to say that eat the suhoor because having suhoor is a barakah, is a blessing. And he used to instruct us to delay the suhoor 
to the very last moment before the Adhan of Fajr. And he used to break his fast. Question to you guys. The Sheikh just said that the Prophet would delay his suhoor until the very last moments before the Adhan, before Fajr. I, on the other hand, heard that it is custom to stop eating 10 minutes before the Adhan. So which one is right? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Last moment before the Adhan of Fajr. And he used to break his fast immediately once the sun had set. And he used to say the people would be in good terms. They will be all right as long as they hasten in breaking their fast. Okay. So this is something that I actually learned after last year's Ramadan when I was already done with it. A brother told me about it because I would actually delay my iftar. I would feel pretty hungry at 3 to 4 p.m., but around 6.30 when it was time for iftar, man, I felt fantastic. I felt great and I wanted to keep on fasting. In those days, I even said, man, if I could, I would just keep on fasting to the very next day. This is how good I feel right now. So I kept on delaying it and sometimes I would have iftar two or three hours after Maghreb which is now I know not good. This is not what you should do. However, I learned that after last year's Ramadan. Now I know and now I'm going to break my fast immediately, of course. But there's really wisdom in it because it protects us from going to extremes yet again. The time is set. We know from when to when we should fast. So we shouldn't go to any further asceticism, if you will. Throughout the day, it was the normal day. The Prophet used to bathe wash his head. He used to use the miswak frequently without any problem, even while he's fasting, even after dhuhr and before the break, uh, uh, before the sunset. There's no problem in that because the Prophet used to do it all the time. The Prophet used to travel والسلام, through, throughout Ramadan. Sometimes he used to go for battle, and go out in expeditions. And he would instruct the Muslims to break their fast if they were to fight so that they would become stronger. So the Prophet used to travel and he used to fast while traveling and sometimes he used to break while traveling. We know that the Battle of Badr and the conquest of Mecca were in the month of Ramadan. I thought they so, were fasting. It is not true what so many of us do in Ramadan. When we think it's a time of being tired, being lazy, not able to I have another question. Work. Guys, yet again, let me know in the comments because from what I heard during the Battle of Badr, it was fought in a fasted state. That's at least what I've been told and this is why I believe, man, this is such an epic battle. The Muslims are fasting and they're still fighting and performing to such a level. So please let me know in the comment section yet again if this is true. I like to believe it's true. It would make the battle, of course, so much more grandiose and epic. This wasn't the case at the time of the Prophet Hassan the companions and all the Muslims throughout these centuries. They used to be active, even if it were Ramadan. I know a lot of people who go to the gym while fasting. I know people that go and play tennis while fasting. And this does not hinder them from offering night prayer with taraweeh and having a good fatur and reading great portions of the Quran. Yeah, I know people too that play tennis and go to the gym. Tennis, I would recommend. It's fine. You can play tennis whilst fasting. The gym, I wouldn't recommend so much. You could technically go to the gym just before iftar. Sure, you could do that. But you need to replenish the body because it's an unnatural state to break down muscle tissue as you do in the gym and then to not eat. It is definitely not recommended. And you cannot compare it to the time of the Prophet wasallam because they were not breaking down their muscles. Yes, they were doing work. They were fighting, etc. They were in movement. That is for sure. But they were not breaking down muscle tissue and requiring such an extent of protein as you do when you work out. So this is definitely not recommended. The shackles we tend to tie ourselves 
in that prevent us from moving forward. Fasting is not something that hinders us from behaving, working, and being active. Sure, absolutely. It's all in here. The Prophet والسلام, during Ramadan used to pray night prayer, as every other night. But in Ramadan, he prayed taraweeh. And night prayer is divided into subcategories such as taraweeh, tahajjud, witir. All of this is called night prayer. In Ramadan, the Prophet used to do that in congregation. He led his companions in three to four nights. And then he stopped because he feared that Allah might make it mandatory and obligatory upon the Muslims and he did not want to burden his ummah. And that is why when the Prophet died and the revelation was over, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, went into the masjid once and saw the people praying during Ramadan night time, either alone or in patches. So he said that if we combine all the companions and all the people to pray behind one Imam, that would be a good thing. So he revived the Sunnah of the Prophet Islam, which he had done three or four nights. And he appointed Ubay ibn Ka'b. Okay, interesting. So by this standard, wouldn't this be considered an innovation then? If the Prophet himself said that he doesn't want to burden his Ummah, but then Umar decides to have it during Ramadan. To me, this sounds like an innovation then. Please let me know what you guys think about this. And moreover, what do you think about Tarawih? Is it mandatory or is it simply something that you can do? And Tamim al-Dari, may Allah be pleased with them, to lead the people in Tarawih. They used to lead the people from after Isha till just before Fajr time. And the people used to carry staffs and sticks to lean on because it was they were too tired to stand. This is how the companions used to spend their time during night time in Ramadan. And the Prophet ﷺ used to also encourage the Muslims by saying whoever prays night prayer during Ramadan out of conviction and anticipation of the reward, Allah would forgive his previous sins. And the Prophet Sam used to- but what did he eat? Perform i'tikaf or seclusion in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Tracing and trying to pursue the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, which is better than a thousand months. He never missed this i'tikaf except once. And his wives used to perform i'tikaf with him as well in the masjid. And this is where the i'tikaf should be done. How? What was prominent? All right, this video opens up even more questions. I'm still waiting for the food part. This is why I actually clicked on it. But nevertheless, I'm learning more things here. So does this mean that the Prophet went into the masjid with his wives? Was there no segregation whatsoever? Yet again, for the thousandth time today, please let me know in the comment section. In Ramadan, that the Prophet ﷺ used to revise the Qur'an every single night with Jibreel. And he would revise the whole Qur'an during Ramadan, except in the last year before his death, he revised it twice rather than once. And also, Ibn Abbas tells us that the Prophet ﷺ was as generous as the wind and he would be mostly more generous during the month of Ramadan when Jibreel used to revise the Qur'an with him. This means that the Qur'an ignites the will to give in charity because it makes you believe in the promise of Allah that if you give, Allah would double that to 10 times, to 700 times for you, only if you believe. 
Therefore, Ramadan is like any other month, but the rewards multiply and the atmosphere supports you to go ahead and excel and raise the bar and do exactly as the Prophet ﷺ had done. But what did he eat? Trying to achieve the I want most to know. possible rewards from Allah Azza wa Jal by utilizing every moment during your day and during your night. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that he makes this Ramadan the best of all Ramadans that we had ever witnessed with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh no. All right, and this is it. An amazing video, many, many new questions. However, absolutely no explanation whatsoever of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ate during Ramadan. This is why I clicked on this video initially. Anyways, I'm going to cut it off here because I asked you guys so many questions and you can answer them in the comment section down below. Now I'm going to look for another video in which I will finally, inshallah, find out what the Prophet ate. Guys, nevertheless, if you enjoyed the video, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh